What's going on, Warriors? It's your boy, Lionheart. And, um, <sighs> feels good, man. First of all, you know how we do things, man. I want to appreciate you guys for watching right now, liking videos, subscribing, commenting, sharing my videos. I see the subscriber count still going up. I appreciate you guys. You know, your interaction, you're still commenting. Be on Twitter or here. You're sending me suggestions on Twitter. Let me know about subjects and stuff that I should um, cover and do a video on, which I greatly appreciate. Um, yeah, it means a lot. You know, it motivates me to keep doing this thing, you know. And um, I'm going to keep pushing forward, man. Keep pushing forward, doing more videos. And somehow I still haven't caught the C-Virus. I'm out here in the real world. Dodging the C virus like Matrix is dodging bullets in the Matrix. I don't know how I'm doing it, but I'm doing it. Well, I've got that mighty guard. You know, when I go out, my guard is at maximum efficiency. Like, I don't drop my guard for nobody. I ain't standing next to nobody. I ain't inhaling nobody's air. I'm trying to stand as much distance away from people. I'm wearing my mask. I wear my gloves. So, I'm keeping as far away from people as possible. Which will probably explain why, you know, but, yeah. And regarding that, I've actually been to the cinema more times in the past less than two weeks, yeah. Well, actually less than ten days than I have in the past three years. Crazy. First time I went to watch Batman, which is a Gollap movie, and now I went to go watch this movie, Juju Kai Sen Zero, the movie. Hella worth it, both occasions, which is a relief. And we're going to get into that right now. Juju Kaisen. Let's start off with a spoiler-free review, shall we? Is this movie good? Absolutely. Should you go, is it any good? I love the movie, and I definitely think it's something you should check out. Even if you're not really into anime. If you want to watch something with cool characters, interesting story, you kind of don't know what's going on. There's revelations, amazing music, set pieces, epic spectacle, just um, inspirational stuff going on. Like inspirational stories and, you know, characters overcoming trauma and, you know, realising their potential and you see what friendship is and... You know, the essence of friendship and overcoming your shortcomings and doubts within yourself. This is the this is the movie, anime movie. Hundred percent. I give this movie ten out of ten. Definitely recommend you go watch it. And um, yeah, that does it for my spoiler free review. Because I can't say anything without spoiling anything. Because the whole movie essentially is a spoiler. Any little detail is a spoiler. Um, there were fight scenes. The fight scenes were godlike. The music was incredible. Um, godlike movie. 100% recommend you go watch it. And um, yeah. 10 out of 10. And I would say that's the spoiler. Free review. Done. So if you want to join me for the complete review, which is about to start in about, I would say, five seconds. Which means it's going to start now. So this is going to be the complete review. Spoiler. Here forward. So if you're still here, thanks for sticking with me. And um, if you're not, come back once you finish watching the movie. Or if you're curious... You can stay and you're not going to watch it or you don't mind spoilers. All good. All good. The more the merrier. So let's talk about this um, show. So this uh, this um, movie started like the TV show because it started with the main character of this show, who's Okutsu Yuta, yeah, was in a sealed room. The same like Yuji was in the TV show, right? And essentially what happened was you saw... Gojo Satoru, yeah, Satoru was in the same room with him saying, look, the higher ups in Juju Kaisa want to execute you, right? And Yuta was like, yeah, I want to die. 
I'm dangerous. The thing is, he volunteered to be captured because there was an incident in his school where bullies were picking on him and essentially he just mangled them, right? But it was because he's possessed by a special grade, highest level cursed spirit named Ricker, yeah? And he wanted to die, but Gujaro Satoru said to him, sorry, Satoru said to him, look, being alone sucks. If you're afraid of hurting people, come with me. I'll take you to a place where you can learn to control your powers, harness your abilities, grow, gain friends, and people will admire you for the simple fact that you'll be able to use your abilities to protect and save people. And that's a hell of a lot better than being alone, living in sorrow, till the end and dying Yuta decides to take him up on it and joins him they go to Juju Kaisen that's where he meets um, Panda um, Togi and Maki right their first years at this point yeah because this is the events of this movie is set a year before the events of the actual main TV show, right? That's why you see in this um, movie, um, Gojo is wearing like bandages instead of the um, the actual eye mask that he no that he normally wears in the TV show, right? Uh, so when, yeah, when he first meets them, I'm gonna have to say their names, isn't it? Panda, Togi, and Maki. When he first meets them in the classroom. They're startled by him because the the density of the special curse spirit that is possessing him, it makes the, the, the pressure in the room extremely hard, right? And that's when they're on their defense and they're, they're shook of him, essentially, when they first meet him. And they actually try to attack him, right? But that's when Gujo tells them, look, what are you doing? What are you attacking him for? And they said, look, he's, a special, he's possessed by a special grade spirit. This place is not for you. And Gojo says to him, look, he's a victim possessed by a special grade spirit. You are Juju Kaisen students with your goal is to save people like this. He's a victim. So what are you doing? And that's when they fall back and they're like, understand. Even though it's a bit weird what he's saying, in the essence, it is true. Right, so that's what happens. And then the first thing Gojo does is he wants to help train Yuta. So he sends Yuta on a mission with Maki. And the thing is about Maki is she is a member of one of the um, great sorcerer families of the Juju Kaisen world. Well, you know, you know, of the world of the anime, yeah. Uh, but she doesn't have any um, cursed energy. Right, she doesn't have any abilities, but what it is is her powers have manifested in a weird way. So essentially, instead of having cursed energy, what it does, it has made her body into like a superhuman body. So she's got superhuman ability, superhuman strength. Yeah, superhuman strength and superhuman a limited um limited invulnerability, essentially, and that is her replacement for not having cursed energy so she's like a special special case in terms of that whole world right and she uses these um cursed weapons right to um exercise cursed spirits so essentially they um Gujo sends them on a mission to a school to fight fight against this i think it's a a grade cursed spirit essentially that has kidnapped two kids Right, and that's the thing about Gojo Satoru, yeah. He has a teaching style where he loves his students, but he's got that kind of like tough love kind of thing. So he will put them in the most dire situation possible, but he feels that they should be able to overcome it if he if they meet his expectations, right? And even if they're about to die, he won't step in but he will step in if their death is imminent because he's Gojo Sotaro he 
godlike, yeah? So even if he's far away, he's still monitoring the situation so he can actually jump in and save them or teleport there and save them and end that that situation in an instant in order to save them. But he will only do that as a last, last precaution, right? So he does love his students, but he does have a habit of putting them in the most imminent death situations which can seem like he doesn't care for their life but he does he just wants to push them and in certain situations to get the best out of some of to get the best out of some of these um characters you have to put them near the precipice of death and that's what you see in this character because essentially also what this does is what I do like about this is they do explain certain things about characters that they don't explain in the actual TV show. Yeah, like they even explain about um, Gujo's um, powers. Yeah, like he's got like the his red orb ability. Yeah, they, they actually explain they say it can destroy um, anything in existence at an atomic level. They've never given that ex um, that explanation as to what his the red orb ability is or red um, hollow ability is, right? Um, so that was godlike. I like those kind of little explanations they give um, to detail the abilities of certain characters, right? Go on that mission. And first, um, Cursed Spirits that attack them, Maki just destroys them. Oh, yeah, Maki. Yeah, I did say Maki is one of the main families, the Zeni family. I did say that, right? Because there's three families in the whole um, world of Juju Kaisen. There is the Zeni family, which Maki is a member of. There is the Kamo family that Megumi and I think it's narashumi or something like that the guy that is a second year and he uses the um bow and arrow um cursed ability right like that guy and he can power up his body as well with the cursed energy there's that guy and then there is the gojo family right which is you know gojo satoru's family yeah uh and yeah so those are the three main great fam um sorcerer families in the whole world of Juju Kaisen yeah and that's why they consider Maki a failure because essentially they say she's a failure because she doesn't have the godlike powers or like the potential of normal family members because she's got no cursed energy she's got like a she's just got like a superhuman body yeah which they don't acknowledge yeah but she's determined to prove them wrong um, so yeah, they go to this school and try to. They Maki destroys like the first um, wave of cursed spirits that tries to attack them, and that fight is instant. Like there's not a god like this. Um, she does a god like combat sequence, but nothing really because it's just it's just a one sided massacre. Yeah, they go into the school and then they do essentially find the main grade A cursed spirit, and. What happens is, I think it poisons Maki, or something like that, where she's a little bit, she's incapacitated, and I think it swallows them. She tries to attack it, she drops her weapon, they fall inside of it, right, and she actually gets poisoned on her leg, you see like her leg is poisoned, but then they find the kids as well, right, um... And then Yuta comes to a realisation and then he awakens um, Reika. He asks for her ability because he can see that um, Maki's about to die. And Reika is released and she destroys that cursed spirit. Like it's... She destroys it, yeah. All this time, Gojo is watching. Right, but he doesn't do anything because you know he wants to see he wants to see Rika. He wants to see the ability of this special great spirit. He actually wants to see it, right? Because it's no joke. The power is incredible. It's a special grade, and there's not many special grades in the whole of Juju Kaisen. I think there's only, I think they say there's four special grades in the whole of Juju Kaisen, right? And she's one of them. Yeah. So, essentially, um, yeah, that's how that situation resolves, right? 
Um, everyone gets healed. I don't know what happens to the kids, right? But then Gojo sends him on another mission. But he goes on another mission with um, Togi. Yeah? The guy that could do the... Um, I think it's Togi... Inuz Inumaki? Or something like that. Yeah, I'm sure it's Inumaki. Because I kept thinking it was Maki. Right? But then I... You know, towards the, um, no, there was a, where there was the, that second mission that he was on, I heard him say, he said, Ino, and I do know his name is, um, Inumaki, um, but it's just, it, um, yeah, Inumaki Togi, but they really say Togi in the TV show, yeah, uh, essentially, so they, yeah, they go on, like, this mission with, um, to some, a shopping mall, because they heard that there are, Special grade, no, no, there's like a lot of cursed spirits in that shopping mall, and it's like terrifying people. And what happens is they actually show the ability of Togi and his cursed spirit because you actually see like the cursed spirits join together, right? And Yuta is worried, but then Togi uses a incant. He says something, right? I think he says burst. And they just, he just destroy one shots the cursed spirits. Yeah. And they think it's over, but it's not. Right. Because they try to escape. But then there's another barrier that's been put up. And that's when they introduce um, Ghetto Suguru. I think, it's, yeah. Ghetto Suguru. Yeah. That's when they introduce him, and he is essentially one of the best. He's like one of the best friends of Gojo Satoru, yeah. Uh, but he is a special grade, and they actually explain his ability, which they never explain in the TV show. His ability is he can absorb and control any cursed spirit, even a special grade cursed spirit, right? So that's why he's classified special um, grade spirit, yeah. So yeah, so now it's godlike because I actually understand his ability. And in the TV show, I never actually understood what his ability was, right? So now I know who he is and what he's capable of, right? So I do feel like this TV, sh the movie is important to understand certain things about, you know, about certain characters, right? Um, and that's when he comes in. And essentially what he does is he wants to obtain the special grade curse Rika that is possessing Yuta, right? And this is his whole MO because he is currently in possession, I think he said, of 4,000 spirits or something crazy like that, man. Like, he is dangerous, essentially, extremely dangerous. At the moment, he is the main villain of the TV show, right? So that just shows you who this guy is. All right, so he summons a cursed spirit, right, to fight Togi and essentially capture Yuta. Well, Yuta, so that he could get Rekka. And that's when they fight, but then Togi uses his ability, right, and hits that special grade spirit. Not, not it's not a special grade. Like it's a, I think it's a. A grade spirit and he doesn't do much damage to it his voice is hurt he drops his um what is it voice clearer or throat it can like helps his throat right throat medicine Um, they manage to escape right but because Yuta is kind of like doesn't know his own abilities and he's new to this whole fighting thing at the minute Toki tells him stay back let me handle this on my own you'll just get in the way Right, even though Tug um, Tuggy is hurt, he still tries to go to fight the um, the cursed spirit downstairs, and that's when Yuta says, "What am I doing? After all that, um, Gojo has been doing for me, and he's been training with Maki, essentially to um, enhance his abilities because now he's got a sword because Gojo said to him." What happens is we have these special cursed, these special weapons, right? Where that you can imbue them with cursed spirits, energy. 
if you focus your energy, the energy of Rekha into that sword, that sword can be used as a medium for her abilities, right? And that's how you can harness the power of the special grade cursed spirit that's possessing you. So he says, look, Togga, I'll go with you. I have to do this. I can do this. I can fight. And that's when they go to actually fight the cursed spirit. They come up with a plan and the fight is godlike. That's when you start to see the potential, the innate potential of Utah. Yeah. Like, and you see, because he actually does take damage, but he's hell resilient. And you can see that the guy, he's heroic. He is genuinely a good dude. And he's genuinely got, his he's got potential. It's, and you, maybe it's something more than just the cursed spirit that is possessing him. The special grade cursed spirit that's possessing him. A little bit like Yuji in the main show. Because Yuji is um, Sukuna's powers, yeah? But he is more than that. There's got to be something more to him because he's too godlike. He's way too godlike. So there's got to be something more to him. All right. Back to the movie. So they have like a godlike fight, um, you know. Yeah, fight with godlike, man. Godlike sequence, godlike abilities. Then you start to see he's got potential. And they manage to finish him. And that's when um, Ghetto sees him and says, Damn, I didn't get to see Rika. And then he leaves it, right? And then they have like a, the Juju Kaisen have an investigation. They find out that the whole area was infiltrated by somebody else. And Gojo realizes that it was Ghetto. Gutu um, Suguru was there. And then they're at the school. And then Ghetto comes with his other followers. Yeah. Because he's actually got like a special cult essentially and what the cult does is they purify cursed spirits right so if anyone's possessed by a cursed spirit or there's having problems with cursed spirit he will purify it but essentially what he's really doing is he's using it because his ability is to absorb cursed spirits so it's essentially a way of him gaining more power and getting more cursed spirits right and he is essentially like Magneto in the X-Men. Because what his main goal is to do is to purge the world of normal human beings. And he wants the world to be inhabited exclusively by um, Juju um, Sorcerers. Juju Kaisen Sorcerers. Just people with the cursed energy. That's what he wants to do. So, as I said, that's what I mean when I say he's a little bit like a Maca Magneto, where Magneto just wants all the humans to be vaporized and just the world to be dominated by mutants. Right, so yeah, so that's interesting, like really, really good, right, um, in terms of that development of the story, essentially. And he comes to this school, Juju Kaisen, just randomly and he says i'm waging war i want to eradicate human beings on the 24th of december i'm going to unleash all my demons and he says he's got to call it like devil's night or something like that right um yeah the the, the devil's the devil's night or something right where he's going to unleash all four thousand um of his cursed spirits and, and special grade spirits. And it's going to kill everybody. He's waging war on Juju Kaisen. And on everybody. Gojo says I can't let you do that. And you really think I'm going to let you. Leave here alive. That's not going to happen bro. And that's when he unleashes some of his spirits. Like high level spirits. And he says. This is when Ghetto says to Gojo. I have your students in my sights. Yeah. You can kill me, but I'm also going to kill your students as well. So, look, save your students, let me go, or kill me, your students die. You know how Gojo feels about his students. That's how he manages to get away. Then we fast, then we go to the final battle. 
I'm skipping quite a lot, you know, because there's a lot of story development and character development, but that's all, you know, part that leads to this event, right? So the night comes when they're going to fight against 4,000 spirits. Juju Kaisen has all been assembled. And then it's like a war, yeah? Like a Lord of the Rings level war. Or I was going to say Game of Thrones, but that's an insult, to, an, a massive insult to Juju Kaisen. It's a war, an epic scale war, essentially. In the middle of that war, Gojo realizes where's well, Keto, and he thinks himself he might be going to school after um, Yuta. So then he sends Maki, and I think he sends Maki. Toge and I think that's it because I think Panda stays with them and he sends them to the school just in case and it finds out that Ghetto is actually there and he is actually going after Utah. Maki finds him first, fights Ghetto, um, yeah, get, Ghetto and Ghetto he, he, he obliterates her. Yeah, he just gets rid of her. And then Yuta comes, and then he sees that, and then he's very grateful to Maki, because Maki has been helping him to grow, she's been teaching him, and she's also been a friend to him, right? So when he sees that, he tries to, he wants to ask if he could just save her, right? Like, he's pissed, but then that's when um, Ghetto says to him, look, She's not even, she ain't got curse energy. As far as I'm concerned, she's a normal human, which means she's got to be purged. Yuta does not want to hear that. So that's when him and um, Ghetto fight. And that fight is ridiculous. And that's when you see the potential ability of Yuta, right? He summons Rekka for the second time, right? And then he says to um, he, I think he, and then he says to Rekka that he will free her from the spirit of the whole air uh, possession because he's he has a philosophy and I'm sorry an, um, an idea that maybe he is the one that cursed her, not she has cursed him. That is what he might. That's what he thinks might have been happening, right? Because there is no record of enough of a. Another cursed spirit existing like Rika in history. So it doesn't make sense as to where she's come from. Alright. So they fight, yeah. And in even in that fight, Yuta, yeah. Okutsu. He does the Inumaki clan of cursed speech. He does an ultimate attack from that family. He is not even a member of that family. He saw the guy do one attack, two attacks of the cursed speech and he learnt their ultimate attack. He summoned a dictaphone, right? Oh, no, no, um, a megaphone, sorry, a megaphone. And he shouted into the megaphone, DIE! And it literally nuked Ghetto and the uh, special grade, but he still managed to survive it, right? Ghetto still managed to survive that attack. Well, no, the cursed spirit that he summoned got destroyed, right? And then he summoned like another one, but with an ultimate attack, right? Using He pushed all 4,000 spirits into that special grade spirit to do an ultimate attack. And that's when um, Yuta um, Okutsu said um, to Rika, I'm going to sacrifice myself to free you from this um, um, this whole um, possession, but can you lend me your power just one more time, right? And I just want to talk about Yuta doing that attack with the megaphone. Togi, um, Togi um, Inumaki, He's not a special, he's not one of the three great um, sorcerer families in Juju Kaisen. His family have the ability, um, they have, they are the protectors of the seal 
of cursed speech. Yeah. They alone have harnessed that ability. Utah masters that ability using not he doesn't master it because he does like an ultimate attack but he says he but he says oh my throat tingles a little bit your throat tingles a little bit and you just use their ultimate attack in a megaphone after seeing it once so then you think yourself okay something is up with this guy man so there so he basically has a fight with ghetto um, and they do, he does have to fight his final attack against Ghetto and he uh, he just nukes Ghetto and that's when Ghetto is like destroyed, like half of Ghetto's body is destroyed but he still manages to survive, right, until he, um, Gojo comes there after he's finished that battle and he talks to um, Ghetto, um, Satoru and Ghetto are talking and I'm not too sure what happens, right, but you do hear a sound that sounds like a slicing sound, right? So I don't know what happens. But in the TV show, Ghetto Suguru does have like um, stitches in his head. Looks like his head's been, he has like a scar on his head that's been stitched together like some type of mad Frankenstein. So maybe Gojo Satoru cut his head. Just cut the top of his head off. I don't know. Right. But so we don't know essentially what happened in that, that scenario. But when they come back, Gojo um, and everybody, Maki, Togi, Panda, they all come and they find Yuta. And then Yuta is actually there on the floor, but he's not dead yet. And that's when he sees Rekka, yeah, in her special um, grade form, right? Her awakened special grade form where she's got like the eye. Right, because to do the ultimate attack, he had to fully awaken her. Yeah. And he says, he has to go to Rika. And he releases her from the curse. And she could, and she goes back to looking like a little girl, how she did when it was, when she, you know, when she was before she got killed. And that's when it becomes revelation that it was actually him that cursed her, not the other way round. And then Gojo says to um, Yuta, "You are a you are a member of one of the great sorcerer families." And that's when he's a bit buffered. He says, "Yes, you are." And he said, um, "You are a member of Sugu Sugawara Mishizane, yeah, and." That is the same person, the same um, vengeful spirit that Gojo is a descendant of. And then he reveals that um, um, Okutsu Yuta is actually his cousin. He says that me and you are cousins. Now it fucking makes sense why this character is so overpowered. Because Yuta is ridiculous. Ridiculous, like he is broken. Even in the TV show, yeah, Gojo has mentioned him once. And he said to him, he said that there is one person who is the potential strongest. Well, there's the person in the second year, which was Yuta, and there was another guy in the third year. And he says that those two are the most powerfulest in the school. And Yuta has the potential to actually be even stronger than me. Which is mad. Because if you remember even in the TV show. Gojo does say. He could beat Sukuna. He could, uh, he could beat a complete version of Sukuna. So if Sukuna got all 10 fingers and was fully awakened. Gojo says I'd be able to beat him. He's saying Yuta has poten the potential to be stronger than him. And when you see what Yuta can do after re um, realising just some of his ability in less than 10 minutes and he's able to beat Ghetto, that's when you're like, oh shit. Yeah. And um, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. There is like an ending, a special ending after credit scene, which to be honest with you, I don't really get. But I think its purpose, the purpose it serves, is to tell us why you don't see Utah in the TV show. It's because he is on a mission in Kenya with one of um, Ghetto's. Um, I don't know whether you want to say disciples or followers or partners or people that was was working with Ghetto, but is no longer working with Ghetto, right? Uh, so that's why I think it is because Gojo comes there. And I think the whole idea of Gojo coming there in the after credit scene is just to show that Ghetto, I'm um, sorry, that um, Gojo knows where Yuta is. He's in Kenya on a special mission or just training up, right? Uh, because he's the second year, he should still be in school, right? But because he's so godlike, right? And he's still got the sword, right? So I think maybe it's because it's kind of like a keepsake or something to remember. Um, Wrecker by because he's imbued it with some of the power that when she was when um, he had cursed her right so that's probably why he still has it because he doesn't need it yeah Yuta is broken broken character beautiful but he's broken like hella overpowered but him being the cousin of um, Gojo Satoru it makes sense so, um, yeah, that's the movie, man. Um, so, I definitely would recommend you watch it. The movie, God, like, man. As I say, the music, the fight scenes, the explanations. It tells you about the um, the three great source of families. The Seni family, the Gojo family, and the Kamo family. It tells you about Ghetto and his ability, what his ability is. He's a special grade curse. He can absorb... Um, curse spirits including special grade spirits and he can um, control them it tells you what um, Gojo's um, one of his abilities is like the red orb um, red hollow it it basically it can destroy any entity at an ato at an atomic level Right, and um, so yeah, it's godlike, man. It explains to you a lot of things about characters that it doesn't explain to you in a TV show. So I would definitely recommend you go watch the the movie. It's in the cinemas, but I think it's only in selected cinemas. Right, it's been released by Funimation UK, which is essentially um, the manga UK um, branch because manga UK existed. They did distribute anime in cinema. In, at certain circumstances, right? They were bought by Funimation, and Funimation has bought. So yeah, so Funimation bought Manga UK, and then Manga UK became Funimation UK, and Funimation, who's essentially completely owned by Sony, bought Crunchyroll. So it's all interlinked. So yeah. Go on the internet, do a search. Where can I watch Juju Kaisen? And yeah, give it a watch, man. It's definitely worth it. Cinemas are trying to get people into the cinemas, right? So the price of um, getting to cinema is actually kind of cheap right now, right? I mean, I've watched the movie for, I think it was like six ninety nine, which is hella cheap, man. I remember going to cinema, it cost me like 15, uh, 15 pounds, yeah, to go watch. A movie yeah so now it's 6.99 because it's cinema is not making too much money so they're trying to get people into the cinemas so that's why they're reducing the prices that's my discussion my little review tell you what happened in that movie and yeah I might go watch it again if I'm being 100% honest with you movie is that good so, that's the end of the review. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you guys so much. It means a lot. If you've watched it, what do you think of this review? Are you going to watch it? Let me know. And um, I just want to say thank you once again. And I'll catch you in the next video. Later, Warriors.